Welcome. Welcome to the podcast today. I'm your host, Rachel O'Mara, and I am super, super pumped, you guys. I'm excited to, that we have Dr. Jill Volte Taylor, who is joining us today with all of her characters. Hi, Jill. How are you doing today? I am so excited to be with you. You know, the push and the pause, that's what it's about. That's right. We're going to get into it the push and the pause, the four characters, and lots of good stuff coming our way as we learn how to optimize our lives, rising to our next level of leadership. And before we do that, let's all just arrive here. One of my favorite things to do is this introductory pause. I'm going to lead us through that. Go ahead and close your eyes if you can, feeling your feet on the ground, just taking a couple breaths, natural breathing here. Whatever feels good at that pace, letting out any exhale. Maybe there's a sound, maybe there's a sigh. And just notice what your body wants to do. Is there a certain part that feels like it has a message for you today? Simply acknowledge that. Go ahead and take one last deep breath, inhaling through your nose if you can. Opening your eyes, coming back into the room and just noticing all of the colors and the textures, beautiful space that you are in. Exhaling, setting your intention for this time. Mm. All right, well, I wanted to give a little introduction. I know, Dr. Jill, you don't need too much of an introduction these days, but for anyone who says, hmm, that name sounds familiar. How do I know that name? Well, <laughs> you probably do. So Dr. Jill was in 2008, had a TED talk called My Stroke of Insight. And it was really the first TED talk on the map that went viral. And so you may have seen her holding up a brain and explaining what that brain did as she had her stroke of insight and had a, a very, very experiential share around how she was conscious in one side of her brain and really just changed up everything from there for the rest of your life. Is that right, Dr. Jill? <laughs> oh, changed everything. Yeah, so Dr. Jill studies the brain for a living and is it okay if I call you Dr. Jill? I can call you yeah. anything else. You can call me anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Perfect. Maybe I'll call you by a character name while, when we when we get there. I don't know. That'll be fun. Yeah. And, and uh, so Dr. Dr. Jill, uh, not only did she have the TED talk, but she has written two books. One was around her stroke of insight, and then her latest book came out with Hay House in May of 2021, Whole Brain Living. And that's a lot of what our focus will be today because this is an incredible book. I got to tell you, you don't know this yet, Dr. Jill, but I spent a week of my, my summer studying you at the Wright Foundation uh, where we study human potential. And your book was our topic and I couldn't put it down. I just learned so much about my characters and my parts. So that brought us to, to today where, where Dr. Jill is on the pause cast. And I'm just so excited that you're here and we're gonna get into the push and the pull of the pause and talk about what it is that goes on within our own brains where we feel these different maybe tugs and, and pulls of different, so, uh, so to speak, characters. So Dr. Jill, my question first off the bat is, I'm, tell us a little bit about just an overview potentially of these four characters, why you wrote the second book whole brain living and how that got you to where you are now. So when I gave the TED talk, um, I it was very interesting because I, I got instantaneous world fame. I, you know, I was in Hong Kong, people recognized me. I was in Antarctica, people recognized me. I mean, I, you know, I was in these far regions wow. of the world. TED talks were everywhere. 
uh, at that at that point. But mine was the first one that went out into the world. So um, I always joke that, you know, I'm Jill. I always thought I was looking for Jack. Well, who knew I was looking for Ted? So we got <laughs> exploded in the world in 08. And um, people treated me with an incredible sense of reverence because of the journey that I took and the journey that I shared. But that wasn't what I wanted. What I wanted was for each of us to show reverence for ourselves and for one another. So um, if for me, the TED talk was, you know, great and fun, but it, it, it missed my point. And so it took me years and years and years of trying to figure out how do I communicate about the brain in a way that people can really relate to it and understand it. And I was giving a presentation at a conference for a corporation and I said, you know, I love talking about the brain in this day and age because people pretty much know the language and they're excited about it. They know about the amygdala and the hippocampus. But the fact of the matter is we have two amygdala and two hippocampi and two very separate emotional systems, one in the right hemisphere and one in the left hemisphere. And there was literally an audible gasp in the room. And I realized that's the key. That's People don't realize, we just like we have two thinking minds, we have two emotional groups of cells. And so um, I, I ended up writing Whole Brain Living, The Anatomy of Choice and the Four Characters That Drive Our Life. And the four characters are these two different emotional groups of cells intra-relate, they result in specific skill sets, and they end up looking like characters in our lives. So we have these two emotional characters and these two thinking characters, and when you stop and you think about these characters inside of yourself, then it's pretty easy to recognize, oh yeah, I know that character in my left thinking brain. Oh yeah, I know that character in my right uh, emotional brain. And then when I start having conflict, it's like, well, who's talking to who, or who's criticizing who, or this is a choice between which of my characters. And when I wake up and I'm just not very happy and I just want to say no to every, everything and everybody, what's that about? And that's actually one of the four characters. So the four characters are based on the anatomy of the brain. And we have the power to choose moment by moment who and how we want to be. Mm. Right. So we don't just have one character, which is, I think, what we think of traditionally, right? Historically, we've got our brain and the messages we hear inside. And yet you're, you're, you're here to tell us, no, that's not the case. We have, we have these four elemental characters that can switch around like they're at a baseball diamond batting around, you know, one's up, two's up, three's up, four's up. And, and they are. And yeah. they are. And, and once you get to know these different characters, then it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And they're just, because we can only think or feel one thing at a time, we're actually passing the microphone between these different parts of our brain that are trying to create balance. So do, what say do we have in, in you know, creating our own choices and creating our own balance? And we've got a lot of choice. We have more choice than I think we realize a lot of times, right? And and so that's I think this the strength of, of this book and what you're what you're sharing with us today. We're gonna get into the characters and talk a little bit more in depth about those. I also know though that pausing is a, a near and dear topic to you. And we were just talking about it before we went live on the push and the pull of pause. And I'd love to hear from you knowing why and how that is so important in relation to these characters like how do you think of it in terms of why is that so important well i think about it at the level of brain cells because i'm a neuroanatomist so i think about the anatomy of the brain and um you know as a biological creature whether we're a single-celled organism or a human being um, we have two different cycles inside of ourselves. We have positive feedback and we have negative feedback. But what that means is that let's say I'm hungry and so I eat food and then I'm not hungry anymore. So that's a negative feedback loop because that means I'm driven by the loop, I'm hungry, and then I'm satisfied. So it neutralizes that loop. Well, a positive uh, feedback loop then is 
I'm, I take cocaine. Uh, I like cocaine. My brain says, oh, I want more cocaine. And so I then take more cocaine and I go, 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 go. So in the negative feedback loop, we actually end up with a push. I want something and a pause with a satiation. And it's just like everything. I mean, if you look at your life, we, when we're awake, we push, we go, 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 input, 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 and then we go to bed at night and this is the big pause. And during the night when we sleep in the pause, we're not bringing new input into the brain cells. Instead, they're sorting out, creating order out of everything that we experience during the day. And then the macrophages go in, the microglia are like garbage cleaners and they go in and they clean up the waste because you gotta remember the brain is filled with brain cells. Well, brain cells are little living creatures. They eat and they create poop. So when we go to sleep, it's the pause. It's time for that to get cleaned out. So if this is one reason why if we um, skimp on our sleep, we get foggy in the brain. Well, you know, we got some waste in there from the cells that need to be cleaned out. So, so it's really critical that we allow our brain uh, to sleep. And, and when the brain sleeps, it doesn't just clean the waste out of the cells in the brain. It cleans all the waste out it fuels up the lymphatic system so that that can move those big molecules so that we can actually move all that into the digestive tract and then dump that out so so we have to have this balance between the push and the pause no matter what we're doing and we know that even as a sports uh, if you're involved in sports i'm a swimmer and when you swim you you stroke and you glide and you stroke and you glide i mean yeah. otherwise you stroke 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 you burn out the system right it just gets overrun so but if you stroke and you glide and you stroke and you glide then you kind of like with every pause there's this reset for the muscles so that they can begin again um so yeah it, it's uh, life is this balance between the push and the pause yeah. oh so good and i love your sports analogy there knowing whatever, I, I think I'm a rower. So if you don't pause between the strokes, you're just doomed, right? You're going to, I'm going to go down in a blaze of glory, flying and dying and run out of steam basically after probably 20 strokes. So yep. that's really exactly. important. Exactly. <laughs> totally get exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, no, I'm a rower too. I got a beautiful shell here on the boat and it's magnificent, but it is, it's a, and you know, it's such a full body. Oh, and then you just glide and then, oh, I mean, it's magical. This, yeah. you know, we as a biological creature, we're just magical. And, and if we just push, 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 we kind of miss out on the magic. And, and we burn too much energy in the push, push, push without that pause, we miss, we miss the glide you know, uh, and it's in the glide that we allow ourselves to shift out of the push part of our brain into the pause part of our brain that is experientially right here, right now. And that's where magic is. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. You're singing my song, Dr. Jill. So good because what I'm hearing is we're, we're over indexed on that push, right? We are as a, as a society and a culture, and it's just what we've been Reward, rewarding ourselves with, but what I'm hearing is like from a cellular functional level, that is not how things are designed, whether it's our yeah. bodies. Yeah. Or the world. And, and look at our society. I mean, we are skewed to the values of the left brain, which is the push, 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 no pause. Pause is a waste of time, right? It's a yeah. waste of time. Oh. It's a waste of energy. You're wasting your life. It's like, no, it's the balance. So, so uh, in order to be healthy, uh, if you just keep pushing the, the, the push button, that's the cortisol, that's the stress circuitry inside of our brain. And we, you have to allow that to dissipate itself or you're going to create illness in your body. And look at our society. We are, right? We yeah. are. We have illness everywhere. We thr we're thriving in a society of dis-ease. Um, there's a reason why. Yeah, yeah. And it's so important to honor the whole brain coming back to your work, because if we aren't pausing, there's probably a part of the brain where that's actually really critical and, and emphasizes and running the show as a pause. And I think that that's a great segue to talk more about the characters. 
So let's get into it. So I know uh, from your book and the the work that you've done, the, the four characters are there and we've got character one, two, three, four, right? So yes. we can go in order there a little bit, but just high level, you know, character one, actually, can I share what I think it is? And yes. then you can kind of elaborate. Is yes. That kind of okay. okay. So, so before you go there, before you go there, um, the way that the uh, mammalian nervous system develops over time is uh, we have like a reptilian brain, which is brainstem. And then the difference between a reptile and a mammal is the addition of new tissue on top, and that's the emotional tissue. So we have an emotional in the right hemisphere and emotional in the left hemisphere. And then the difference between a human and the typical mammal is the addition of new tissue the thinking tissue so we end up having thinking in the left emotion in the left emotion in the right and thinking in the right and so those are four different modules of cells that give us four different skill sets that then manifest and look like very specific skills and personalities okay you're on yeah awesome yeah so i get it left brain thinking left brain emotional uh, right brain emotional and right brain thinking, right? So those yeah. four, and we're and they're all important, by the way, too. I think. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll they're all them. they they all serve a vital function, and the ultimate goal, though, is to first become aware of which part of my brain am I using, and know that I have these other parts of my brain that I can count on and 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 dive into, pull my energy into, and instantaneously become and embody that character. So giving us power to choose moment by moment, but but you have to know what your choices are before you can choose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the awareness, and that's the pause too, right? Just allowing yourself to understand, whoa, what that is. And we're gonna get into that, I know, when we talk about the huddle too. So character one to me is the, the driver of all the things that need to get done, the doer, and there's that hard and soft aspect of it too, where it might be like really trying to run the show because I'm a taskmaster and I got my, my things to do. And, and so I go off and do all those awesome things. It's analytical, it focuses on what is it that needs to get done next. It's like the, that character that if it's really strong, especially if we're analysts and in the, in the world of our work world now, probably like I was in technology working at Google and like, man, Character ones were everywhere. <laughs> and, and then that softer part is also maybe driving the show, but maybe a little less indexed on like, you gotta do this now, we need it now, productivity, blah, blah, blah. That's my character one thoughts. What do you, I'd love to hear what more. So, so character one, now, first of all, I just call them character one, two and three and four for other people, because I think it's important that we give each of our four characters a name that means something to us. Have you named your character one? I have, I have, yeah. So this is Rebecca. This is uh, diligent Rebecca. I'm Rachel, obviously. So Rebecca is like my alter ego of just getting getting stuff done. Getting it done. I'm in the middle of a storm. <laughs> I hear that. <laughs> Are, you here? Are you okay with that? Is it too yeah, bad? Yeah, that's okay. I, okay. I think it adds, it adds the life force more even. More exactly, more yeah, we're, we're, we're in the middle of it. So um, character one, it's the left thinking tissue. I call mine Helen, hell on wheels, she gets it done, right? So character one is our rational thinking, analytical part of our brain that interacts us, me, my internal world with the external world. So in order to do that, character one likes to create order. And because if everything's in chaos, I can't find anything, right? And so character one cares that I actually put my stapler back where the stapler belongs so that I can use it. Uh, so it likes to control people, places, and things, uh, including time. It's punctual, it gets us on, on time. And um, it knows where I put my glasses. And uh, yeah, I mean, character one is this rational thinking part of ourselves that most of us think of, yeah, I know that part of myself. It's the part of me when I go to work. I think one of the most powerful things you can do is name your character one, like you were saying. So, so yeah, you're thinking left brain, 
running the show, rational thinker, what would you name your character one for anyone who's listening? Because I think this makes it so much more tangible because we all relate to this, right? And like, what would you call that one quartile of your brain? And, and just, we're going to be naming all of them, I think too. So I think that's a one really good way to bring this home as a, as an exercise for all of us. So character ones, and just think if that's the, if that's yours, do you have a character one who's strong? You know, I think of that because I feel like our world is so, so strong already in that. Right. Type of thinking. Yeah. Yeah. Character ones rule the world. They think hierarchically. They have communicate with language. They think linearly across time. I, me, me, the individual, I have a thinking part of my brain. That's character one. I, me, have an emotional part of my brain which is character two. So as we think about characters one and two, they're both in that left hemisphere. And the biggest difference between the left hemisphere and the right hemisphere is that the left hemisphere has a group of cells that defines me, my name, my detail, where do I live, what's my phone number, what do I like, what do I dislike, what do I think is right, what do I think is wrong, what do I think is good, what do I think is bad. So all of that judgment that I, the individual, make rationally is character one. And then how I feel about all of that stuff is the character two. And the thing about character two, left emotion, is that this portion of our brain uh, looks at the world, looks at the present moment, takes the information about the present moment, runs through a filter of my entire past and says, give me a reason to say, no, I don't like this. I don't want this. I don't want it in my life. So it's my push it away. And if it's in my face, I'm going to blame you or I'm going to get mad at you. Or it's also my alarm, alarm, alert, alert. I don't feel safe. So if I don't feel safe right here based on something from the past, let's say, you know, here I am. I'm on a boat out in the middle of nowhere in a horrendous storm. And I have had some, some very exciting experiences in, in where I have had 60, 70 mile per hour winds run through and uh, break my ropes and the boat goes flying. Well, I could dwell on that as my little character too and say, oh, I don't like storms. I get scared when the storms get. I'm afraid of the wind. I'm afraid when it rains. I'm not happy out here. This isn't good. I, 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 yeah. And that's my little character too. And it's my pain from the past, which is kind of the alarm saying, okay, let's look at this. And I can hook into that trauma from my past and I can reflect upon it and I can learn from it and I can grow from that. And then I can bring safety to that. Or I can really just, you know, huddle down and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold on to that fear of every bad thing that ever happened to me in my past. So this is where my trauma is. And this is also where my addiction tissue is. So um, uh, character two carries a heavy burden of, of all of our fears and our emergency fears, but character two holds that so we can explore it with other parts of our brain so we can grow and learn from it. And that's the only way that we can have personal growth is to actually have this character too and then create other relationship evaluating and loving and supporting and thinking about and reflecting upon and setting up a new plan in order to find freedom from our, our traumas from the past. And I feel like that is something that historically we're, we're, we're conditioned to ignore or not listen to or stuff down, right? I know your four characters correspond to the Jungian archetypes, right? So this would be the shadow side, the, the character too, which I think hits home for me in that sense. And the, all the things I don't want to admit about myself or the things that hold me back and that personal yeah. growth can't happen if I'm Char not in touch with that. Yeah, character two gets a bad rap because it's pain. <laughs> and, and pain, if we look at pain and we say pain is bad and we don't want to touch the pain, we just want the pain to go away. Uh, well, many of us have, you know, gone to therapy for 20 or 30 years to, to talk about and to routinize and to evaluate and try to understand how did that pain come to be. Um, and, and so, so, and a lot of people say, you know, I just, I don't like my pain. I, I squash it down. I don't want anything to do with it. And it's like, 
pain is just like a little red flag saying, hey, we have a little problem here. We need to look at it. We need to grow from it. We need to relate it to the present moment because our pain from the past is in the past. It's not in the present. So we can nurture it and love it with other parts of our brain. We can heal our trauma. We can heal our pain. And then we can pull the energy out of that character too and go back into other parts of our brain. That is so, so important. And I want to underline that for all of us listening because this is not the norm, I think, of, of how we do think about pain. Like you're saying, we want to ignore it. And, and what you're what I'm hearing you say, Dr. Jill, is that if we actually just treat it like another character, right? Neutral, objectively helping out this part. It's not about pretending it doesn't exist or not dealing with it. Actually, it has served us to deal with it. And we can use the other characters to bring it into the fold so that it is less painful or that it does heal. And that's what I think is so powerful about your work, this whole brain aspect of how this part yeah. has a place. Yeah. And a lot of, you know, so many people say, oh, I hate that part of my brain. Can we just cut that out so I don't feel that anymore? And it's like, you know, uh, the best way to really manage that part is to, first of all, recognize you're okay. In the present moment, you're okay. That pain is pain from the past. And we're bringing the pain from the past into the present moment. But what do we do with it? Do we just let it be more pain or do we actually love on it and say whatever that pain was from the past, whatever that trauma was, I'm stronger because of it. I survived it. I'm a survivor. So what can I learn about how to prepare based on what I can learn? Okay, I don't set myself up. I'm more careful in these kinds of situations. I stay away from those kinds of people. Okay, I push away. I put a healthy boundary between me and these people or, or whatever it is. What can I learn from my trauma? And recognize that trauma is simply um, a, a, a group of cells inside of the brain that is, is routinizing in itself and more pain, more pain, more pain, grow the pain. But what we need to do then is come in as the other character profiles and say, yes, we feel pain. And, and, and you were not alone. This little character isn't alone. I can bring love and support and say, oh my gosh, we survived that pain. Wow, we, we got a superhero inside of us. And, and what can we learn from that situation so that we don't set ourselves, we can set ourselves up for more success. And character one then can come in whether that is that rational side and say, okay, how do I help fix this problem? What do you need from me? Okay, so we don't take calls from that person anymore because every time we do, we're miserable or, or whatever it is, but we use all the skills of all the brain and we allow that little character two to push the pause button because if that little character two is just routinizing, 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 it never gets to be healed. We have to be able to push the pause button on little character two and let the other characters step in and do what they do in order to help create peace so we can grow from that so that we can go back to feeling peaceful. Because when we're running that little character two in alarm, alarm, alert, alert, we are emotionally dysregulated. Our nervous system is dysregulated. So let's use the rest of our brain to come in and bring it back into regulation, which is a sense of peacefulness. Mm -hmm. And that's our overwhelm that we can feel. And I know you have a 90 second rule that kind of fits into the character to pause, so to speak, right? Where can you share a little bit about how that works? What could like, and I know it's on your website. I'll put the link in our on our notes. Tell us about the 90 second rule and why that, that number matters. So every ability we have, we have because we have brain cells that perform that function. So I can speak because I have brain cells. I can see because I have brain cells. I can wiggle my motor system because I have brain cells. So, but brain cells communicate in loops, in circuits. And from the moment you stimulate, let's say, uh, let's say I'm in a moment here and all of a sudden um, the boat goes whoosh, right? And so I go, oh boy, right? And I move into alarm, alarm, alert, alert. And it's like, okay. Uh, and I have to do this overall assessment of everything. From the moment I get stimulated, I stimulate a loop. 
then that loop will run and it will run naturally for 90 seconds really about 86 seconds but less than 90 seconds and you know this whether i get triggered by anger or i get my sadness gets triggered or i'm having a belly laugh uh things these emotions last for less than 90 seconds so um i encourage people to pay attention whatever you're feeling um, but people say, oh, Dr. Jill, I can stay angry for a whole lot longer than 90 seconds. What are you talking about? But what you're doing is you're rethinking the same thought that re-stimulates that loop. And we can stay angry for decades. <laughs> Lifetimes. <laughs> a lifetime. Every time I think of that person who did me wrong 20 years ago, I can still get riled up. Right. So if we actually just allow that minute and a half that like 86 seconds, even better, shorter time, that actually could help me complete that anger in the moment and get more of that space I need, that pause away from character two to say, oh my gosh, I'm just having this crazy amygdala reaction right now. And it's time to yeah. pause. Pause. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we, that's a huge tip. The 90 second rule. I think that 90 seconds too, because we can feel like we're in that for hours and it's really only 90 seconds. So I know how yeah. challenging that is, yeah. but I think that's such and, a great inspiration. And you know, when, when you get triggered, I always tell people, I don't mind if you're miserable, as long as you remember to enjoy it because <laughs> you're capable of being miserable. Oh my gosh, I'm a human. I'm alive. I have a circuit that makes me miserable. I can get angry. I can get sad. I can get happy. I can go to sleep, whatever. I, you know, it's like I have these circuits and it's like, oh my gosh, I have these abilities because I have brain cells that permit me that as part of my skill set. Well, why would I want to have a, a skill set that allows me to be miserable? Well, don't you have to have the light in order to have the dark? Don't you have the push you know, and the pause? You know, everything is this is a by system here. So, um, uh, yeah, so, so next time you're feeling miserable, uh, just remember, Dr. Jill said, I don't mind if you're miserable, as long as you remember to enjoy it. And look at your watch and you'll see, okay, well, I can be miserable for 90 seconds and then I can run a different loop and go do something else. Oh, I think I'm going to put a post-it on my laptop that says 90 seconds. And it's going to remind me because it is hard to think about that. But yeah, you can be miserable. You're reminding me of what my coach, Dr. Bob Wright says, we're designed to feel. And if we're designed to feel, like I'm pretty sure that that's not an accident. So it might be the miserable, the miserable part of us or the pain or the fear. And that's just all driving us towards pleasure at the end if we can complete it. Yeah. Yeah, we are feeling creatures who think. When you look at how we are neuroanatomically organized, information is streaming in from the external world through our sensory systems and then going straight to the limbic system, the emotional system, character two in the left brain and character three in the right brain. They're both part of the fight or flight. So, so you know, we are feeling creatures. And then once we decide we're safe, then we can pass that information up to the thinking brain of character one in the left and character four in the right. Yeah. And, and so your character too, is that Abby? I call mine Abby. Um, and, and for me, that's short for abandonment. I yeah. think that the moment I came flying out of my mother's womb, uh, where it was warm and symbiotic and I was breathing water and I was listening to her beautiful heartbeat and it was, you know, a great temperature and she took care of all of my needs. And then boom, on my birthday, I came flying out of the womb and oh boy, does everything change, right? Oh, yeah. yeah, so, yeah. so I call mine Abby for that instantaneous because in that moment, everything changed. And in that moment, now I become this creature that is capable of not just being in the present moment in my right hemisphere, but then that left hemisphere is going to bring information in about the present moment and start comparing it to my past and projecting into my future. Mm -hmm. So then I end up with these two hemispheres that are completely temporally different time zones. It's amazing. Yeah. I really related to your Abby abandonment. So I, I named my character to Abby and, and now I, and now I have a little part of me there that is, is endearing because of that name too. So I love that. I love it. So let's go to character three. I feel like, yeah, two is a big one, right? So three, the right brain two, two. emotional. Yeah. yeah. So character three and four are both in the right hemisphere. 
And the thing about the right hemisphere is it's right here, right now. Right hemisphere, right here, right now. And what that means is there's no past and there's no future without that left hemisphere. In addition, there's no me, the individual. All there is is the present moment. And the present moment is I am this mass of 50 trillion beautiful molecular geniuses, these magnificent cells that have differentiated in order for me to have a motor system so I can move around. Oh my gosh, I have language, I can communicate, I have ears, I can hear, oh my gosh, I got a liver that filters stuff. I mean, it's amazing, this magnificent collection, but they're all in the present moment, right? All the cells in my body, they're in the present moment, except for that tiny little group of cells in my left hemisphere that it says me the individual I have a past and I have a future wipe those out I don't have a lot of that anymore I don't have any memories I don't have any recollection I don't have any preferences I don't have any past all I have is right here right now so the right hemisphere is processing right here right now how do we know how we put them together by some 300 million axonal fibers crossing between the two so they both you know i feel like i'm one person right i feel like yeah. i'm me and i'm real and i have a past and a future and i can bring my mind to the present and whatever but mm, there's really four of us so the other two that are going to be the emotion what does it feel like to be in the present moment how much humidity is there in the air and what does that feel like against my face what does it feel like to have the clothing on my body and to have the glasses on my face what does that feel like experientially as i dive into the water and i feel the pressure against my body and i feel the temperature of the water against my body what does it feel like and there's no me the individual because that's in the left hemisphere so i am energy i'm the energy ball that is all around this this collection of cells and there's no boundary between me and other people because without that left brain we're not individuals we're just this collective whole so the right hemisphere it wants to go and character character three wants to go and be experiential and it wants you to go too because oh my gosh there's more energy if you come too and oh my gosh and it likes an adrenaline uh, rush so come on rachel let's go bungee jump let's, let's, go, right let's, let's do it Let's go. Let's go zip line. Let's go the do it. The right, and right, right, right. And and sometimes it's a good idea, but because it doesn't have a past or a future, and it doesn't define what is right, what is wrong, what is good, and what is bad, one of us might decide that something illegal sounds like a whole lot of fun. Mm -hmm. So our prisons and jails and prisons are actually filled with character threes who made some bad decisions. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and reality. They, but, a, but, yeah. but let me also say this, it's that character three that there is no right and wrong or good and bad. So it's creative, it's open to possibility, it's innovative, it's entrepreneurial, it's about anything goes, it's all possibilities. It's excited, it's right here, right now, big enthusiasm. Uh, it's creative, it's wonderful, it's a wonderful part of who we are, but it wonderful. needs some of that rein it in with the left brain, right, wrong, good, bad, in order to keep it out of trouble. Yeah, it needs that balance a little bit is what I'm getting. And this is our playful side. And and so much of our life experiences can feel that joy, all the things that we, like all of us have individual things that will bring us joy and, and do as we want to feel better. And those are the things that character three can bring us. Exactly. And then some people will say, oh, I don't have any creativity in it. So no, you're wired for it. But what's your character one saying about, you know, if your character one thinks your character three is a waste of time, then you're not going to be permitted by that character one who's going to drive you hard uh into right and wrong and good and bad they're not going to give you time to play but again it's about the balance and and the pause is play and if we're workaholics workaholics we all know that leads to stress and disease what's the break what's the pause and the pause is all these things that we do billion dollar market yoga uh meditation mindfulness all these things that we do in order to activate ourselves into that right brain play experience to pause the circuitry of the left brain and our genius is in our right hemisphere if all i'm doing is running my to-do list that's all i'm doing is i'm running a to-do to-do list Anybody can run a to-do list, but my genius, it's over there in my right hemisphere. Yeah.
Yeah, that's so good because yeah, we're so wired on that character one, like we've talked about and that character three sometimes gets put in the corner or not allowed to talk and speak up. And uh, my character three, so I, I've named her Ray Ray because that was my nickname in college. And it's just this playful side of me that I relate to. And and uh, and you are, I wanna say Pigpen, yeah? I'm Pigpen, you know, Pigpen, remember Pigpen. Yes. Big Ben's walking around in a dust storm that's like 2,000 years dust from 2,000 years ago and proud of it. You know, just very present, very joyful, very, 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 very available. Yes. So present too. Yeah. yeah. So think of what your character three would be named too as a, as a listener here, because this is so important to give and own and acknowledge your character three for all those who may think about like, really, I got a character three or wow, my character three is a little out of practice. He's been on vacation for a couple of weeks. Maybe I need to get back into that rowing or the ukulele playing or whatever might be coming up for you. Wherever the joy comes from, you gotta have the, you gotta oh, bring the joy back. Yeah, and honor that. And and then to round out our, our, our house here of the characters, we've got our character four, which is that right brain thinking, but also this, we are all one and greater than our individual selves, right? Absolutely, because in the right hemisphere, uh, we're right here right now. First of all, we're right here right now. And I, the individual, I don't exist. So I become the energy of the collective whole. And the collective whole is as big as the universe. I'm just atoms and molecules moving around in vibration. And this is the part of me that when I feel euphoria, when I feel true peacefulness, when I feel really grounded and really connected to my divine self, my, my most humble, my most loving, my most nurturing and supportive, my unconditional loving part of myself, that's that character for circuitry. And um, it's a wonderful character that, that is, it, it, it's, it's inside of me and it's always there. I see character four as the blue sky. Here I am in this tremendous storm. I got character one, two, and three on top of out there somewhere there is a blue sky and that's the character four. It's always there. The clouds and the weather will come and go of, of character one's judgment, character two's pain, character three's, woo, I gotta go. But always underneath and behind that all is, you know, I'm here, I'm good. I, this is the true pause of my heart. This is the true pause of me as a human being saying, oh my gosh, I'm alive. It doesn't matter what I have. It doesn't matter who I'm with. It doesn't matter. None of that out there matters. What matters is, oh my gosh, I have life. And because I have life, I have the greatest gift of all. Wow. Couldn't say it better than that. Character four brings it all home and we all have that character. And, and I think when we're when we're feeling that pressure, overwhelmed, just living in those other characters, Dr. Jill, it's like that part of us is the part that can get us out of that, I would say too, right? That's when yeah. she needs to come online. It's yeah. always holding the space for us. And, and it's kind of like, okay, let me peel out my to-do list. Okay, I'm not gonna do my to-do list for the next half hour. Let yeah. me peel out my pain. Yeah, I'm gonna be right here in the present moment. Let me peel away my impetus to go do something. No, I am simply going to be. And that's where the difference between what is what am I as a do and what am I as a be. Mm -hmm. And when I simply am grateful that I am at all, that's when I am in the be. And to sit in that space, I think, is the, is the sweet spot. And the yeah. duality, right? The duality of all of my humanness and these parts of me that are the do, 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 which is where I'm seen and heard and get these beautiful yearnings met. But then if I don't have this higher self, like the big S self, right? And yeah. the, the, the universal part of me, that character four, then I am not connected to the greater whole. And that's the whole, I think the whole point of all this, I heard you saying, you know, you feel like you're in a character four and you're just like, these other parts are moving around and that you live in that a lot. And, and I think that's something uh, that is very inspiring and courageous, right? Like, wow, what would it be like if I just was in that space anytime I could want to go there? It's amazing. It's amazing because, you know, I, there's this, <laughs> this is kind of weird, but I call it going to the gutter. 
And I encourage people, you know, I have been in several, uh, I'm 63, I've been in several really bad car accidents. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, knock on wood, so far I'm still with us. Um, But, you know, I picture myself having that trauma and I'm laying in the gutter and I'm literally laying in the gutter bleeding and I feel the wetness and I know if I'm lucky, I have 60 seconds left of being a conscious living being and in that space of knowing that life is gone it's not about saying goodbye i'm gone you know that's detached character one is gone judgment is gone character two the pain is gone because now i'm right here having this experience character three isn't going anywhere because i'm not getting up I got 60 seconds of simply being grateful that I existed at all, that I was alive. And I feel that life draining from the body. And it's like pop knowing that when I come out, I'm going to be even bigger, the character for no longer tethered to this organic mass. And, um, and, and that's a very humbling space to go so whenever whenever i get stressed believe it or not i go to the gutter you go to the gutter really I, yeah it's it's my pause you know it's like in that in that perception of self and imaging character two you might as well be quiet it's over right character one you might as well be quiet it's over character three might as well be quiet it's over go to character four so that's one way that i visualize and i feel and i experientially find my way to that character four and that's what's left and that's what connects us to our higher selves and the universe i i'm a big believer of that myself i'm i i know my character four is doing a lot of growth these days so i am looking forward to something like that, like a visual that can be a pause. And, and I, I think of myself spinning in the, on the planet and gravity and the universe and, and uh, you know, what does that mean? <laughs> it's the same idea, a little less graphic, I guess, but uh, it works. It works for <laughs> Whatever me, so. works, you know, I don't care how you find your four. You yeah, just, yeah. So, you know, and, and that's the, that to me is the beauty of the book, Whole Brain Living is, is you know, there are chapters that dr- d- will take you to your each of your characters here's your skill sets uh when do you see your character one where does she come out where do you see your character four where does that part of you come out who hangs out with your character one who hangs (laughs) out with you know when you're in your character two pain who do you call and when you call them who are they being when they come to you are they misery loves miserable company so my two is going to call someone else who will let me come whine and complain and they'll whine and complain and we'll just magnify the whine and complain and sometimes that's like great you know for for character two or do i call a character four to come in and just i just kind i just need to be held i'm not I, i need to vent i need to be loved i need to be supported i just need i just need to be loved by a character four and getting to know your own network of your own four characters this is golden because then all of a sudden you know the neural network of who you are and there's nothing more powerful than mm. knowing the network of who you are the fabric of our lives, right? Like those tapestry of all of us together. Let's get into the huddle because I think that's a perfect blend of of the brain. Tell us about how we move into, like, what do we do? Why is the huddle helpful? And I know you've got a great one sheeter on this as well. So so the brain, the brain huddle. Um, So what do I do? I have all four characters. Okay, so that's great. You know, I can learn a lot about myself. But in my moment of need, I need to be able to, and usually it's the need of character two. Because when I'm in my pain, what do I do? Uh, Because I can say things I shouldn't say. I can do things I shouldn't do. I can ruin my whole day. I can ruin my wedding night. I mean, I can ruin my relationships. I can ruin everything. I got a character too. So, so how do we how do we save ourselves when we really need it? And I call this brain B R A I N acronym so people can remember. And essentially what you do is, is, and I encourage people to practice this literally in the beginning, 20 times a day, 
20 times a day. That's yeah, a day. 20 times a day. Because it's just cells and circuitry. And the thing about circuits is the, mo the more often you run a circuit, the stronger that circuit becomes. It begins to run autom on automatic and you create a habit. So I encourage people to really practice a brain huddle. It can save your life. It'll save your life a million times. So B stands for breath. Isn't that the pause? Bring your mind to the present moment. Yeah. Breath is in the right here, right now. There's no breath in the past. There's no breath in the future. We breathe right here, right now. I can inhale. I can hold that. I can exhale. I can increase my frequency. I can increase my amplitude and my volume. Oh my gosh, right here, I have breath. Bring your mind to the present moment. Why do I do that? In the present moment, then, R, I recognize which of my four characters actually called the brain huddle. And this is why I encourage people to practice, you know, 20 times a day. Pay attention. Did Were you in your character one? Did your character one call the huddle? Because, you know, you got a timer on your, your watch on your arm that pinged because you said it so that you would, like, take a huddle. Your character three, playful. Oh, yeah, huddle, huddle, huddle. And sheep, you know, that little character, it always wants to be with everybody. Character four can call a huddle. How is everybody? Come online. You know, it's like bring them all online. And character two, it's like, mm, okay, well, I'd really rather be miserable, but all right. Because the thing about character two is character two is pretty content in its pain right mm -hmm. and yeah. so it takes a lot for little character two to actually open it up and say okay i'll let i'll let you guys let me out let me fine, out of my pain. fine i hear that one in my head fine. what is it fine fine you want to meet fine, fine. Okay, fine. <laughs> I love that. Exactly. Fine. So, um, so B, breath. R, recognize who called the huddle. A, appreciate. It doesn't matter which one called the huddle. Appreciate the fact there's four of us in here. All right, there's four of us. Great. Appreciate. I, inquire. Well, how is everybody? And who do we, as a collective whole, who do we want to have come out in the next moment? Because... We have the power when we're in the present moment aware of everybody to actually choose, okay, well, I'm not done chewing on you. Okay, here's a great example. Well, and then N stands for navigate. Navigate moment by moment by moment. So let's say you and I are fighting. And one of the things about character twos is two character twos in argument will never find a resolution. Never. Somebody has to get out of the two and become a one, a three, or a four, become the better person, right? Yeah. I'm not getting out of my two. And then the telephone rings, right? Telephone rings. And so then I pick up the phone. Well, Helen is a businesswoman. Hello. So I immediately jump out of my character two, purposely into my character one because it's appropriate. So then it's like, oh, mm, yeah, take care of it. Okay, thanks, goodbye. I hang up the phone. Now, you're still there, right? And you're still available because you're still in your character two. And I'm thinking to myself, now, what do I want to do? Do I want to jump in back into my character two because I'm not done fighting with you? Or am I going to stay in my character one and say, we're going to take a break, uh, at least 20 minutes, and um, I'll see you later, you know, and we'll come back and we'll figure out how to communicate this better. Um, and that's me consciously choosing to stay in my right then, as opposed to going back into my two to uh, co continue to provoke you and, and tit for tat. We have the power to choose moment by moment who and how we want to be in the world. And the way we do that, which I've had literally hundreds of thousands of people ask me, but how do I do that without a stroke? The brain huddle. You get to know who your four characters are so you know what your choices are. This is the power of choice, the anatomy of choice, and the four characters that drive our life. Mm, so well said. Because that was my next question was, well, what if my two is just so dominant and all it wants to do is dig its heels in? Is it even possible to just like take over? Like, can it do that? Is that even like, is that the choice you're talking about? Well, a lot of people are there, you know, it's like my, my two is so, 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 so strong. And it, you know, I, it, it ruins my relationships. It ruins my relationships at work. It's ruined my job. It's ruined my life. It's ruined my body. Um, and it's like, you need to look at your character too. And you need to, to love that little part of yourself. And, 
and and get to know well when am i a character one am i what what do i take care of do i feed the the cat you know is do do i at least pay attention enough to feed the cat um you know what does my character three do do i ever do i like to read do i read to escape my character two do i paint to escape my character two well, you know uh, do i like to go for walks in nature do i ever feel grateful filled with gratitude for my life and 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 you know i i think and and i am gonna say this because you know in our society suicide is so prevalent and and it's the character too um who is so miserable so sad and if we focus on the pain from our past we all have pain in our past being being alive moment by moment is a painful experience and 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 when you're laying in the gutter and you're releasing that you'll know uh you'll realize how hard this little body works just to be alive but but if we can find a sense of gratitude for anything at all, and, and you know, look at Katie Byron, look at the, the work of Katie Byron. Um, it was, uh, what, a cockroach ran over her. She was lost in her too, and a cockroach ran over her, and she thought it was hysterical. And, and look at Eckhart Tolle. Uh, he was lost in his too, and very suicidal. And then something happened to him that brought him also into the present moment. And there was a good example of a third person uh, who have been now become very strong character fours because they broke that pattern of their character too. So um, if you're in pain, if you're routinizing, if you're caught in that part of your brain, uh, really I encourage you to, to look at whole brain living because um, the first step is being willing to take your little toe and dip it into your character one or dip it into your character three or dip it into your character four. So, you know, you're not alone because you're not alone. There's yeah. four of you. And you have the choice. And that's what I hear you saying, which is so powerful. I know we're coming up on time here. So I just want to wrap this up. What I, and you have, you also, what I'm so excited about is you're coming out with a coaching model. So coaches are going to get trained in this so we can support individuals who are wanting more whole brain living in their lives. So I know that's in, in the works. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, over the next six weeks, I've got a team of, of people who are genius at this kind of thing, building a whole brain living training, coach training, uh, and I'll probably pilot that. I'm planning on piloting that over a 12 week period of time, uh, sometime in the fall. Uh, and then from the coach training, we'll end up with a leadership training and we'll go into a, how do you train children? Um, but we're already running the, some programming in schools uh, for the school system and for the parents, not for the kids, but for the village. So we're helping the village become a whole brain village within which the children live and then can thrive. Uh, we're working with firefighters, with policemen, with cancer survivors, with uh, medical physicians, with, I mean, you name it. And the way I work, ladies and gentlemen, is if you do something, if you have a network of people that you work with and you're excited by whole brain living, send me an email and, uh, you know, Dr. Jill at drjilltaylor.com. Send me an email and tell me about you because I would then say, okay, well, how do I work with you so that I can empower you to empower your people with whole brain living? Because I live on a boat out in the middle of nowhere somewhere. <laughs> I'd like to stay here and let you go do the work. Yeah, teach teach all of us to fish. And that way we exactly. can stay in the river and we'll fish on the river with you, but in other places. So exactly. this has been so helpful. And I can't wait for more of us to learn about whole brain living and just being okay in these parts that potentially have been exiled and all of the things that may not have been right now where we are. So thank you so much for sharing your wisdom and your book with us. You've already mentioned your website. Any last words, any words of wisdom to part and where can we find you? You know, we have so much more power over what's going on inside of our heads than we have ever been trained. And uh, whole brain living is a way that you can actually differentiate. It's like a roadmap. It's like a user's manual on how to get your brain to do what you want it to do. It is beautiful material. Uh, it is healing material. Heal one brain at a time and then relationships get healed. And, you know, uh, I trust that, that one brain at a time we can heal this planet before we blow it up.
one brain at a time, one pause at a time. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you so much, Dr. Jill. Such an honor to be with you today and so appreciate your wisdom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. I appreciate it. Bye-bye.